All right, so let's go with some course creation tips. Um, let me see if I have, wait, hold on a second. Let's see. No, I must have, I must have put it somewhere else. But basically, this is my, this is my tool for course creation. It's my iPad. Okay. No, it's, <laughs> it's my like, yellow pad. Boy, they're getting cheap with those. <laughs> but basically aren't they? what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the really big model. <laughs> eight, eight by eleven. Uh, what I do, here's what I do. The first thing I write at the top is the top, uh, you know, working title, right? And then I write introduction, because every Udemy course has an introduction. And then I typically write something like, What is Udemy? Okay. What is blab? What is, you know, copywriting? Like, like that old story of a famous football coach that he would hold up at the beginning of the season, he would hold up a football and say, gentlemen, this is a football, you know, starting at the very beginning, right? And then what I do is I just ask all the questions that people that don't know what Udemy is or that don't know what copywriting is or don't know what course creation is, I write down all the questions that someone could possibly have. And then I number the questions. So I might have put like this question maybe down here should have been in second place. And this question that I put here should be down here. So it, it all flows from step to step to step. Because one of my biggest pet peeves is when you jump into teaching something, expecting the audience to already know the basics or the fundamentals. Uh, or expecting the audience to to kind of just follow along, just follow me, and I'll I'll get you there. I'll get you to the promised land, right? And you haven't laid the groundwork out for them to understand. So I, I'm really big on flow, flowing from one concept to the next, to the next, to the next. So that's what I do. These typically I'll fill up a page, maybe sometimes a page and a half, and these become my lecture titles. Now. When I'm doing this, I'm freestyling, right? I'm just writing what comes to mind. So I'm not, I'm not optimizing the titles. I'm not figuring out exactly what I'm gonna, I'm just freestyling and letting the creative mind flow because I believe there's something about writing, physical writing uh, that allows your mind to be more creative and allows you to flow better. That's just me. I don't know, some people might have that with typing, you know, but for me, it's pen to paper. There's something awesome about that. So. When I do that, now I've got these lecture titles, right? And so now I'll open up my PowerPoint because most of my courses are PowerPoint and I'll, I'll title one page is this title. The next page is this title. The next page is this title, right? In the numbered order that I put them in. And then I start filling out each page. So I'm basically just drilling down, you know, I'm starting with a concept. What is this? What are the key questions somebody would want to know? Uh, is this does is this something that lends itself to you know do's and don'ts for example do for like my 30th course was all about email marketing so I thought this is a good one to put in do's and don'ts you know do work to build a relationship with your audience don't just sell them stuff every time you you send out an email uh, do offer three or four content emails before you send out an offer you know or a, a commercial email Do's and don'ts is a good one, right? Myths and facts is another good one. Myths and facts about Blab, you know, for example, right? Um, but in general, I, I don't do much of that unless it really makes sense, but I do just kind of go in a flow and I want to make sure that it all flows together. And sometimes I'll even, you know, e even after I put it together in the Udemy course uh, thing itself, I might even move one of the lectures where it makes more sense. You know what I mean? To me, it's all about that student experience where they go, okay, I get it. I totally get that. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. Okay, I totally get that. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be disjointed in any way. So then once I've got those uh, those PowerPoints, so let's let's pretend this is the PowerPoint page and I've got the title, you know, what is Udemy? Now I've got room to really get into like, let me answer that question in the best flowing way possible, right? Let me let me go step by step and explain like the best thought, the, the kind of the biggest thought first, and then drill down, drill down and drill down and get into detail. Uh, so in effect, you know, this is an expanded version of this, right? And then sometimes it'll take two or three or four PowerPoint pages 
Um, and then uh, from that, now I've got the, the the rough PowerPoint, right? But to just have text on a page is kind of boring. So once I've got the whole PowerPoint done, uh, I'll go back and I'll, I'll go find some stock photos on, uh, I use a site called dollarphotoclub.com. There's also bigstockphoto.com. And I'll buy images that relate to the main sections or the main topic points of the page. And then I'll just put like the whole, it'll just be the whole image on the page. And then uh, it'll still have the title. And then sometimes, you know, I'll put in images inside the PowerPoints, you know, that relate to the page too. Sometimes there'll be funny images uh, because you got to keep your, your students, you know, interested. Um, if, if you don't, you yeah. lose them. You know. I think that that's a good point because I've seen like a lot of instructors, I use images in my PowerPoint and I just go out there and find something related to that slide and put that in there. Sometimes like I'll have one image that relates like on my course creation or my course marketing, I have like a little dollar bill or something and that goes through all of the slides like that. But on my word or right. my uh, webinar course that I'm creating, I've got like when I'm talking about dot coms, I found this image that says dot com or whatever. Like you said, you have to keep mm -hmm. it engaging so that it's not boring. And yeah. it's very important really to choose slides that are powerful, that they stand out. And not only that, but they're easy to read too. Right. Yeah. And uh, by the way, another point while you're talking about easy to read is uh, is those those points on your PowerPoint, the, the font has to be pretty big because you got to understand people are reading this on mobile phones, smartphones, tablets. So what might look good to us on our nice big laptop might not look good on a, on a yeah. smartphone. So we need to make sure that everything is readable even on a smartphone. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of the basics of the process. There's more to it. Uh, the, one of the reasons I like to put images in is because they're not seeing my face. So most of my most of my courses, and that's one of the things that allows you to speed up your course creation, is most of my courses are all PowerPoint, except maybe the promo video, where you really want to show your face, and maybe the intro video. Now, one day I'm going to I'm going to go into a studio and I'm actually going to film separate, you know intros to different lectures for all my courses. Um, and I've already got the contact, somebody local that's got a studio and everything. <clears throat> so I'm going to just have it all teleprompted because I know how to tell, you know, read teleprompter and I've all teleprompted. I'm just, and then I'm just going to plug it all into all the courses at one time. So here's what I learned about, about Udemy course creation from my eBay experience. In my eBay experience, because I was doing so much volume, I learned that you need to assembly line everything as much as possible. And that's why the process of, of course creation is assembly line process, just like this. The process of even how I go into the Udemy uh, course curriculum page and how I input all those videos and how I do that is all assembly line setup as well. In the sheet that I'm gonna give you guys, um, there is, I believe there's a, a link to the course uh, I just popped it into the chat there. I believe there's a link to the course where I actually walk you through every step of the process of publishing your course. And that's where you learn the assembly line of everything and how even that saves you so much time by doing it this way versus the way most people do it. See, there's an there's a, a way that things are designed by programmers for you to do. And then there's the real world quick streamlined way that if you think outside the box, you can get it done so much faster. And that's what I like to do. I like to just think ahead and go, okay, I, I know programmers did this and they think very linearly, they're engineers, they're, you know, whatever, right? But here's how I can speed this up even faster. So that's, uh, I hope you got some good tips from that. I know there's there's a lot more to course creation uh, than that, but uh, those are some of, the, some of the things that I think will help people get off to a much quicker start, especially if you have an issue with like, getting past the challenge of just it, like if you have writer's block or you're like, man, what, you know, okay, what is Udemy, right? And then uh, stuck, what, what do I do? That helps to just kind of give you, think of what, what kind of questions your student would have about the topic, write all those questions down and then flesh them out in your PowerPoint as you go. 
Awesome. So, 